G'day, my name is Pete. You're watching Ahead of the Curve. So today I'm going to cover quite a few different Tesla Model 3 and Model Y settings. If you've only just recently bought your car, this video is an absolute must. But even if you've owned your car for six, 12 months, a couple of years, definitely still worthwhile watching because I know experienced Tesla owners, some of whom had no idea about some of these settings. Now I'm going to cover between 30 to 40 different settings, so it's a long list, and I'll include that list in the description section down below this video. I'll also include a link to a recent article that I've written about the different aspects of EV ownership, the unwritten rules, the ABCs, and a lot of other really good information, so well worthwhile uh, checking that out as well. So as I said, I'm going to cover between 30 to 40 different settings. I feel very strongly about at least 10 of these settings because they go towards safety and without exaggeration, these could potentially save your life or at the very least prevent a fairly serious collision. And I'm speaking from experience here because it wasn't that long ago that I was driving along in my lane and out of nowhere, this car to the left of me um, cut me off. And I genuinely believe had it been not for one of these settings, there's no way I would have been able to brake fast enough to prevent uh, rear-ending this car. In fact, it was one of these um, settings that enabled me to automatically save this footage, which I can actually show you now. So as you can see, I'm in my lane. There's a black uh, VW Golf in front of me. That's merging to the left lane uh, in front of this P plater, which is the burnt orange car um, in the left lane. And the P plater responds by just instantly swerving into my lane. Now this video probably doesn't um, do the situation uh, much justice because I actually had my foot on the accelerator here. So I was trying to overtake the cars in the lane to the left. And while I had my foot on the accelerator, I had to slam on that brake as fast as I could because that car would have got literally within probably a foot of my car. Now, as I said, it's because of one of these settings that I was able to have the car slow down fast enough to avoid the collision. So what I'm specifically referring to is something that's unique to electric vehicles, and that's regenerative braking and the single pedal driving mode. So... What happens is with regenerative braking, the car's trying to put power back into the battery by utilizing the kinetic uh, energy of the car moving forward. And even while your foot is still on the accelerator, once you're past a certain point, the car starts to slow down. So even while your foot is still on the accelerator, way before you have a chance for your foot to hit the brake, the car's already slowing down. And that was definitely, I think, the point of difference in this instance. As I said, the foot, footage doesn't do it much justice, but believe me, that car got really close to me. Lucky I was paying attention. Luckily, I slammed on the brakes as soon as I could um, and was still able to avoid what would have been an expensive um, repair, that's for sure. With so many different features to cover and in order to respect your time, what I thought I would do is split this video into two parts. So I'll include the link to the second part of this video in the description section below. But what I'll do now is just cover off the most critical settings first. So if you've got a Model 3 Standard Range Plus or a what's now called a rear-wheel drive or just a Tesla Model 3, you may not see this regenerative braking option, but you will, all the three trims, you'll see the stopping mode. So the hold mode, um, it's an option that came out um, about six months ago through one of the free over the air updates and it allows the car to come to a full and complete stop under regenerative braking alone. So you don't have to touch the brake at all and for the car to come to a complete stop. If you head over to the autopilot menu and scroll all the way down to the bottom, this is a group of really important settings. So forward collision warning. So you can turn it off if you really wish, but probably best to have it at early. Uh, lane departure avoidance, so you've got warning or assist that you can choose from. Assist just allows the car to slowly um, bring you back into the middle of the lane should you fall asleep or um, not be paying attention, etc. Um, automatic emergency braking is fairly straightforward, uh, but I'll cover. I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next video. And obstacle aware acceleration, so with the instant torque of these. Um, really fast cars, especially uh, with the performance. Uh, that's obviously another critical one to um, be aware of and consider turning that one on as well. Uh, speaking of safety, if you head over to the safety menu and 
scroll all the way down to the bottom again, you'll see the cabin overheat protection option. So this will prevent the cabin from getting to above 40 degrees. So if there's any chance that you have um, kids or pets and you know you may leave them in the car inadvertently, uh, definitely have that enabled. Uh, but just bear in mind that um, the state of charge of the battery if that drops below 20 percent uh, that feature will automatically cease to um, cease to work so as i said below um, as i said before um, i'll include below the the link to the second part of this video but if you got some value out of this one feel free to give it the thumbs up um, if you um, think that someone else that you know may find this valuable please do share the video but feel free to head over to the second part of that video now. So I'll just sign off. As always, stay safe, stay sustainable and stay ahead of the curve. Ciao.